Bosch grinder in for a pair. This is the Bosch brushless 18 volt. This is the GWS 18V stroke 10. And look at this. I even treated myself to a nice new cover on the workbench. Another cover is getting a wee bit rough looking. It's getting hard to actually find the parts lying on the bench. So we're sort of just blending in with the background. This. Doesn't turn in right anyway. Does she run? No. But she's making a sound. It'll turn backwards. But she locks up if you go forward. Right. And I'll see what the problem is. And straight away, somebody's already been on this before. Tell by the screws. That black one there is actually a longer screw. It's meant to be down here, holding on this here we release for the guard, which also isn't fitted correctly. It's jammed up. Just a little bit longer to compensate for the thickness of this metal. It's not that big a deal. Motor still turns. No problems actually on the head here. Before we go any further, make sure the motor still works. No problem. Right, so that's okay. It's just this. This could be as simple as a bad bearing. And it does. This bearing inside this housing is actually collapsed and she's jamming up. This one here is fine. So it's just this one. Question is, have I got one of these? Right now, I don't have this particular one for this machine, but Bosch, several four and a half inch grinders, loads in fact back about 20 or 30 years and they have loads of this here type of bearing flange all different shapes and sizes basically but instead of manufacturing a completely new one every single time sometimes we'll just use the same one as a previous model and just give it a different number so to do that in the past so we had a chance this one here the proper one for the mach this machine ends on p15775 this here one's D6C. Pretty sure this here one's off the older GWS 9 stroke 115 or 8 stroke 115, which is no longer made. Yeah, looks like the 9 maybe. Don't need that. There it is. There's a wee o ring on it as well. It just slides on there. It has the wee notch up here, like it should have. And everything else looks just about the same. And it fits. So we'll use this one instead of ordering one of these online and waiting for it to come on. So we'll change it, we have to take out the spindle of the old one and change over the gear. And there's only one way to get it off and that's to press out this here spindle. So set this up in the bearing press, press this directly down, this will press out and your gear will fall off. You don't have to grab the gear because it's sitting on this here bearing. It doesn't matter what you do to it, you can destroy the bearing, destroy this whole housing, 
you're replacing it anyway. What you need to do is get the shaft out, keep the shaft, and keep the gear. Simple as that. And you can see there, she's only turning one way, or at least jamming the motor. It's completely collapsed. And our cage is actually tore apart. Turns one way, but not the other. So get rid of that. Get rid of the old washer. That's the old bearing seal. This wee washer sits on there just to cover the bearing. This bundle goes on. Press this on first. And with the spindle first in place, then press on your gear. And that's her. One new bearing flange on the gear for a Bosch grinder. You hear a wee bit of rubbing there. That's just this washer that's installed on top. They always make that sort of sound. Don't worry too much about that. Now because this bearing did fail, the bearing cage inside fell apart, collapsed, and there's no bearing seal or oil seal on this side. Oil seal is only up here to keep the dirt out. Let's open this side, let that grease from the gearbox and to lubricate the bearing. Because that's open, any of that there bearing cage could have fallen onto here. So I'll also clean this here out just in case. Which is more than likely the case because you can actually see little pieces of metal on there. Now oh, that's her. But cleaner looking. Need to get some new grease in this now. I'm just going to use the Bosch gear grease. Not a massive amount. Don't be overfilling that cavity. Some on that gear. And that should be enough. If you put on too much, it's just going to end up cavitating and wearing out the gears. You'd nearly be better on off putting on too little than too much. These are wild for cross threading, so do start them before you drill them on fully. Left hand first. Until you hear the click. They're self tapping screws, and if you just go ahead and drive them in, they're going to cut a new thread. Just stick this on now when it's nice and handy. Drops on the place. It's the black screw, the longer one. It actually goes on there. Do this head as well if you want. You can actually rotate this any way you want. There's four different positions you can put it to. Put it to whatever suits you. There we go. Easy enough that time actually. Yet. That's her. One Bosch grinder. GWS 18V stroke 10. Up and running again with one new bearing flange. It's not even that expensive. I think it'll cost about 15 or 20 euro. Well worth doing, whatever fails on you. Now, this one, customer says he wants calibrated, so we can only guess what it is. 
a rotary laser level and a cheap one at that a cheap and cheerful made in china rotary laser level how do you know because it's actually called literally rotary laser no brand name on this a model number no brand an lre203 made in china even still that probably cost about 200 quid to buy a lot cheaper than the main brand but still now the customer says he wants it calibrated i don't calibrate laser levels don't have the equipment here i just don't do them you can send them away to get them calibrated but it's not cheap to get this thing calibrated for me to post it away get it back and send it back to the customer again you're probably looking at the price of this laser level to be honest or at least half the price of it it just wouldn't be worth it but it's in here now so at least have a look and see what's wrong with it a lot of the time you get them in somebody's saying they need it calibrated but there's actually a problem with it that's why it's not going level See what I mean? Right, so it's running. So that is just a back and forth motion. I can raise that up. And I can lower that. Or raise it up. So that's moving. So she's tilting back and forth this way. If I go up and down. Yeah, there you go. So it's back and forth this way. If I tilt it that way. So it's actually changing the horizontal line. You just get a grinding sound. So in other words, it's not that it needs calibrating, it's actually not leveling itself to begin with. Either one of the gears is stripped out or there's a motor problem for actually adjusting either the X or the Y axis. So we'll strip this down and see if we can do anything with it. Parts for this you're probably not going to get. But sometimes it can be a simple fix. Battery pack. Big cells in that actually. So this will run for an entire day anyway. Carefully open her up. Don't pull it all the way out because there's cables and ribbon connectors attached. Let's see what we can disconnect here. See a cheap ribbon connector it doesn't have a clamp. It's just been glued on. Luckily, it's only glued in that one corner. Doesn't take much to hold. I could have been really nasty about it and just covered the whole thing in hot glue, but put up another little test. Makes it easier for me or anybody else that's assembling it. So now inside, we have two motors. This one and this one. And obviously that must be the problem there. Why is that all bent up? So I don't know if it's got a drop or a jammed. See this motor's nice and straight. This wee motor unit here. She's cocked off to one side. She started to separate down here. Two motors in these and one big set of springs here they're pulling everything back this side to the corner and these two motors here just run and lift this wee brass counterweight up and down 
So as these lift up, they actually they actually pull two different axes. So it's lift on this side, this is lift on this side. If the springs back here, this is actually keeping them pulled down. So it's free enough here. That's moving. So it must be the motor itself. This motor and gearbox is actually jamming up. Looking at that thing, even though it's just made in China, a budget one. Apart from the fact that the board has no coating on it, doesn't seem to be protected. Doesn't look all that bad a unit, to be honest. Nice wee heads, decent wee motor units on it. It's nicely put together. We'll see if we can get this off and fix it up. The actual housing of this motor and gearbox is only pressed on anyway. There's a wee tab bent over to hold it together, so maybe we can get that back together. I don't want to dismantle this entire thing. I just want to get this motor off and see if it can be fixed. There's a little spring on this side, but that's already disengaged. the motor out. Right, you can see the damage there now. So all this is, it's just a brass nut basically. It's just brass insert up here, it's just threaded. This here, it's the spindle of the motor. With basically a bolt on top. So as the motor spins, it just unthreads and threads this here brass insert. And as it threads and unthreads, it actually just goes up and down. So this is stationary, the part inside spinning. So as it goes around, this goes up and adjusts the position on this laser encoder motor here. Just take that off for now. So as this motor in the center actually turns, she's moving this here gear, gear train. So let's load on in high speed. It needs to be reducing the speed and increasing the torque enough to actually move this here thread on top very easily, but nice and slowly. And that is turning, no problem. So it's actually the gears just mismatched. You see these four gears, they're on pins. The pins actually locate into this here metal cap. So if this isn't fixed correctly, these aren't fixed correctly. They're going to move and flex back and forth. So as the motor runs, feels any resistance, these can actually just move away from each other and just start grinding and stripping instead of actually driving anything. So if I can fix this back on correctly, this should solve the problem. So now... I can just get this lined up, line up the pins for each gear with these holes. Should and I just press that on. There we go. Now this here side here, the plate was a little bit bent as well. I just straightened it a little bit on the vise. Now all I have to do is put this in the vise or something or hold it in some way and just tap these little lugs back over to hold this in place. That's her. Couldn't really bend these down fully so I actually had to get go next door and get the expert welder to put two tacks on. It's about too fine for my skills. But that should hold her on. But that should hold her down. Which way is this facing? Pins facing in. Bracket on here. 
should be that way. Always check on this side, it's the exact same setup. It's very finicky. This would be a lot easier with a five and a half mil socket ratchet, we quarter inch. Of course. I have no idea where mine is. So always the socket you need that you cannot find. A five and a six, but of no five and a half. Looks a lot better. We're not gonna know now until we switch her on. See if she runs. The little thing you need to do is reconnect this tiny little spring. The spring is just to keep this wee brass nut forced around here, stops it from spinning the opposite direction. That's what the bar is for, and this here second bar has to stop this, make sure it doesn't go around any further. That should do the job. Let's see if we can get her back together. Let's see if it'll run. Lastly, get your battery back in. Hopefully this works, because that is as much as I'm going to be doing with this. Hey, moment of truth. Well, she's running. Hear the motor going, so he has to move quite a bit to get it up to level. That's her. Look at that. One rotary laser fixed up again with a wee broken motor inside. But how accurate and level the unit is is a different story. It still wouldn't be worthwhile sending this here away for calibration. It's up and running now. It's only a quick wee repair, so it'll not cost the customer too much. But that is as much as I can do with it, because anything else is going to cost too much. That's her. That's how you can fix one of these rotary lasers. If she's trying to level herself, and you can just hear a grinding sort of noise coming out of it, or a clicking sound, check them little motors on side. It could be a problem with them. And as for repairs and spares, you're not going to get much spare parts for this. Maybe a battery pack, that's about as much as you're going to get. Calibrating. Different places charge different amounts. It can be anywhere from about 80 or 90 euro to 200 euro to get some of these machines calibrated. So when you're able to buy the machine for 200, it doesn't really make sense to send it away for calibration. It'll probably be quicker to actually buy a new one online, get it delivered, than it would be to send one of these away for calibration. Plus it's going to be roughly the same money, if not just a wee bit more. That's her. I'll keep that customer happy. Now, right, up next, what have we got? A Matabo SD Estrel. This is the KHE2660 Quick. I wonder if it's a chuck problem or something else. I don't know why it's come with the chuck off of it. Chuck goes on. It still has the keyways. Oh, no. It's actually the actual drill is the problem. I 
doesn't sound like the motor's gone, but it does sound like there's a bad bearing in there. Might be able to fix this one. the motor so off this side I wouldn't be the biggest fan of the tabo this particular model of SD Astro I've always found very very heavy duty or at least felt it big massive heavy gearbox on it all metal it's a very impressive drill Never had a very impressive switch, mind you. What's going on there? Just a piece of foam. There's the problem. No bearing there. That doesn't feel like there's much there either. Yeah, that one's also gone. Hasn't collapsed, but sure as hell ain't good. Yeah, did it destroy the housing? That's the main thing. Doesn't look bad. Must have got a new lead at some stage because that's not factory fitted there. The sheath only comes to the end of the grommet. The clamp's actually holding nothing at all. Have to adjust that as well, shorten these leads so the clamp's actually holding on to the sheath on the lead. Because that bearing completely failed and fell apart, that would have been getting very hot when it was running. As you can tell by the back of it there. Very nice armature though. That's well made there. Nice solid armature, all resin packed as well. It's good quality. But because it's actually got so hot, because of from that bearing failing. She's got hot enough to melt the plastic, so she's actually stuck down in here. She's well stuck on, can't get anything to prise that out, so draw two holes in the back, just at the very edge where the bearing race is going to be. And poke something on to tap it out with. I'm just using an old drill bit here that's already blunt. She's a tight fit here now. There we go. That's the old bearing then. She actually completely blew the back seal out. Balls actually must shaped it and actually pushed it out. Look. So that customer don't know when this was going. It wasn't just an instant fail. Would have heard this going bad for a long time. But housing ain't too bad. The plastic's not destroyed. So hopefully that'll still hold a new bearing. If it doesn't, you can buy this housing for what, 20 euro or so. I'll get this old one off here now and get a new one on. Right, that's the old ones off. Now the new bearings 626 and a 608. Now, that's my Tabo armature. It's a perfect example of a good quality armature. It shows you the way they actually dip and wrap them in resin down here. The more resin and coating on them, the better protected they are. The main thing is to hold the windings down in place, but you only need a little bit. A lot of people see the stake ons down here. The windings where they attach the stake here onto the comb bar is the weakest spot. But generally, you never see them break down here. You want to see a little bit of resin on it just to help. But it's not the main reason. The more resin you have on it, there's more protection for the armature. 
This is actually a perfect example of it. The biggest weak point on these here is going to be the bearings. They're consumable. They're going to wear it eventually and if they fail, they have steel balls inside that are going to start rolling around inside the armature as well. As what happened with this one. So as you can see, them steel balls have got up and started crashing into the windings in the armature. Got a little bit of damage here. There's a couple of other wee dents in that. Just up around here. But didn't break the windings. Down here, hardly made a mark. So the more resin on it, or varnish, thicker the layer. If the bearings fail and the balls become loose, it protects the windings. If that had only just a light coating or no coating, it actually would have tore up those windings no problem. It actually would have broken them. The armature would have been destroyed. This is a Bosch armature, same thing. Instead of just constantly dipping it and putting more resin on, they actually have a twine wrapped around like a cage and that's dipped as well. So there's a varnish dip and then this here windings they help hold it all together, keep it all nice and tight, but also protect it if any debris or steel balls get on there that could damage the windings. And if you look at a Makita one. Same idea, this one's just not using extra dips in the resin or twine, this is just using a resin gel that's been put on the windings at the end here. As you can imagine that there to a degree is helping to hold everything together but it's not exerting any pressure to actually clamp it down. That is mainly just there just in case debris gets in and hits the windings. So that resin there is actual protection. And this type of protection isn't as good on the Makita. It's better than nothing at all, but still it can cause problems on its own. If you overwork that motor too much, get it too hot, the heat can cause us here to crack. When it comes cracked, we come loose, and that hard resin can break off and actually cause damage on its own. As you can see the windings down here just have a bit of string and resin down here. The actual stakes aren't even protected at all down the side. Then you go to the other end of the scale. Another Bosch armature, this is off a Bosch 8 I believe, or a 7, and there's nothing. There's a varnish on it and that's it. A little bit of resin down here on the stake ons, but nothing up here. Still a good machine, but if anything gets in there, it's going to just tear up these windings. Not as good. That's why you don't see these ones lasting 20 odd years. But you do see ones like this lasting this is the perfect example of why you need it. This is actually a fine, fine nibbler. This was a brand new armature, was only running a few weeks, but because something got onto the motor, there a bit of metal from the nibbler, or a nail or something, got on past the mesh, it got inside. It was able to get inside, and as this was spinning, just tear up the windings. It's actually broken the winding there. A wee bit of protection from resin down this side, but nothing up here. So if anything gets into it, like this one, it just tears up the windings. So if you want to see if an armature is good quality, just check to see how much protection is actually on it. The more resin like this or twine wrappings is on it, it's much better in the long run. Now press these back on, not forgetting this little insert on top. Brushes are a wee bit chewed up, but there's still a bit of length on them, so they'll still work all right. Could replace them, but I'll have to replace the whole brush holder, and I don't have one in stock. Plus, it's going to cost another 20 or 30 euro, and I'm not 100% sure this armature is going to work all right. So, for now, they're just going to have to do don't install that yet, just get it in place. Once you push it down, the brushes will be in the way of the armature, so won't press it on just yet. Don't want to make a big dent in my new cover. Push that on. Then push back down. 
brush ring. So this is actually just an empty cover. There's nothing there at all. I would imagine the point of that is because this is the same body as a different Metabo drill, probably a precision drill that doesn't take an SDS and doesn't have the hammer action. Just using the same body for two different drills. Precision drill will have speed control. I would imagine this will be to house a speed controller. That'll be get onto a different switch maybe. So this way they just get to use the same body for the two drills, saving them money. And without the speed control they just put on this plate instead. As well, forgot about that wire, so we'll just shorten that now. Hopefully the hammer section in this is okay. Can't tell because I couldn't run the motor to test it. But if there's problems in the gearbox as well, this could become a lot more expensive. Hopefully if it's just bearings it needs, this will be a nice cheap fix. Now, does it work? Look at that. Chuck's holding in on it. Nice one. Nice, cheap and easy fix. One Metabo KHE 2660 Quick SDS drill. Two new bearings. One was completely collapsed, caused it to run very, very bad. Two new bearings and she runs again, no problem. That's her. Okay, we have a troublesome Hikoki gun. Customer says it's not switching on. Which it's not. Power button's doing nothing. Now she's a 2019 machine. Should try a different battery just in case. Nothing. Dead. We'll get on and see what we can do. This might be a very simple fix. Simple fix, but hard to get at. To dismantle the whole cover. screws gently prise her up hopefully if we're lucky it might just be this there we go luckily enough as just a fuse doesn't look burnt, but this leg snapped off from the side. So we can easily replace that. That's handy. These have a 40 amp fuse actually wired in 
to the battery terminal so just in case she's under heavy load and she draws too much current she'll pop this here fuse before she does any damage to the controller or the motor very handy little feature not many brands have that Drop off the heat shrink. And also, we'll unsolder this. And solder on a new fuse. And the best part of this repair, one, it's nice and simple. The hardest part about this is actually just opening up the cover. And two, no specialist parts required. They could easily use their own fuse in this. Some wee specialist thing you have to buy from my cookie. What they use instead is just a standard car fuse. Easy to get, readily available. You can get these probably at most petrol stations. One wee fuse and a few wee pieces of heat shrink is all you need. That and a soldering iron. To help it tick, just turn the actual fuse first. And put on a wee bit of heat shrink. Just keep it well back because it'll start shrinking. If the heat gets to it. Quickly solder them on. Simple as that. Roll up your heat shrink. You can just use a solder and iron to heat it up to shrink it. Look at that. Power on. That's her. Just tuck everything back in again. We're good to go. The cover to get it on. It's easier to just remove the screws. Otherwise they interfere as you're putting the case on. That's her. If you leave the screws on, they'll cock off to one side as you're putting it on and snag on the holes on the opposite side. They'll not go into the right location. So it'll actually stop the cover from going on. So just easier and quicker to take them out. That's her. One high cookie nail gun. Powering up again. Rapid shot. Single shot. Now the tester.
lovely there's not many repairs you get to do with just a car fuse it's a 40 amp fuse you need if you're a cookie gun just stops dead and won't switch on open her up change the fuse and away you go that's her an old Ryobi mixer this is an old one it's not even the normal one I'd be used to seeing and I'm more used to seeing the PMT 1361 I think this here is the 1362 technically it would actually be a younger mixer probably the last of the old blue Ryobis they done but a very decent machine she's clearly done quite a bit of work with the whisk on her can't tell where the aluminium whisk starts and the cement ends anyway what's wrong with her plug doesn't even look right she's all squashed see if this will even go on to the transformer here That is why you always lift the tool off the bench and hold on to it when you're plugging the machine on. You never know if the switch has failed in the on position. So we've got a faulty switch. The question is, have I got one of these? These old blue rail bits, they're not the yellow ones now. These are actually very good tools. But they're all obsolete now can't be got she is different to the older model it's a bit better different switch as well it's not the same switch as the older one not way he wired it on didn't have a spade connector la. he's changed the cable but he doesn't have the correct spade connector so he's just put on a strip connector instead it works but we're better off just wiring it correctly What else has he got on here? Right, that's okay, that's wired direct. That actually looks like a Makita switch. I would nearly say that as a Makita switch. Or at least not a Makita switch, but maybe made by the same company as Makita uses. Right. Makita definitely do one very similar to that. Let's see if I can find that one. I think just the spade connectors down here are a little bit different. Let's see what I have. Now we're getting somewhere. Very similar to the Makita switch, alright. This one more so. But this one doesn't have the lock button. We're leaving it locked on everything else is the exact same though apart from the actual screw fittings here with some clamps on the screws let's use the spades but everything else exact same same body same box same clip same label same actual switch just with a different button here and different fittings here this one here is a wee bit more similar to the button this trigger is too big plus the switch is a safety switch when the button's out you can't pull the trigger it's a safety one probably would be better for this but he's more prefer the lock one i don't have the lock one so this is going to have to do plus it's not expensive and only 20 euro so we're taking these cables off now anyway and we're going to fit eyelet connectors instead
just redo this cable. Get a bit of fresh stuff. There's a bend here. It could be a little bit weak. Uh, we'll also just give it a wee blow out with the air compressor. It got blown out, but not much came off. It's all cement. That's well stuck in there. Now, that should be it. Well, she doesn't come on on her own anyway. It's a good start. Starting on the switch, and she's stopping on the switch. That's what you want. That's her up and running. One old blue Ryobi PMT 1362 with a new Makita switch. That's her. And next up we have a Bosch. And this one looks pretty fresh. That's because it is. This is a warranty job. She's only 2023. Hasn't done very much work yet. It's not brand spanking new. But it's fairly fresh. It's within the year. The customer says. It stopped. It stopped dead. And it looks like potentially a lead problem. Because the light's not even coming on. Definitely hasn't done much anyway. Brushes are barely even broken on. Yeah, just a lead. Could you even call that a warranty? It's a bit funny. Both the live and the neutral is broken. I'd say somebody was swinging this by the lead. Either handing it down from scaffolding, dangling it by the cable, or just messing around and throwing it around the place. That thing's brand new, it hasn't done anything. Nothing wrong there. Now these smaller screws are T10 Torx. Don't be shoving on a Phillips or a pause into it. It'll just strip out the head. Which then you'll have to drill out. If you mess it up, it'll destroy the holders. And they're screwed onto the actual speed controller. It'll cost about 80 quid. So for the price of a T10 bit, Use the right head. Now, might only be a fresh machine and under warranty, but warranties don't cover cables. The cables considered to be a wearable or consumable item, just like the brushes, so eventually they wear out. Plus, generally, they do get a little bit of abuse from the user. A lot of the times, people either swing these machines around by the lead, carrying it by the lead, or even handing it down from the scaffolding by the lead, just lowering it down on the cable itself. Eventually, start to break around here. So that one doesn't come covered by the warranty. But luckily, cable is fairly cheap. 
crystals here, including VAT and Liber, only cost around 20 euro, so it's not going to break the bank. I always get asked about these here. These are actually Draper Ergo Star pliers, like four and ones, cut bolts, the crump, bitless ferrules, cut wire strippers, even bend cable right here. Always get asked about them, what they are, where to get them. These I'm afraid are gone. Draper don't actually do them anymore. You can't actually get these. If you're asking them, not replying, it's because they're gone. Must actually stop using them because people keep asking me for them. Might look online maybe and see if there's anything else I can get. We have power. Sounds good. Sounds better. That's her. One Bosch hammer, GSH 5 CE. Only needing a new cable. Might be under warranty. I'm afraid it leads aren't covered, but it's only 20 quid. Now, lastly today we have a Bosch mix and roll. The famous GRW 11E. And she's running. Customer says she runs no problem, but only for about 10 or 15 minutes. After that, she just shuts down, it won't start up again unless you leave it for a couple of hours. Then it'll run for another 15 minutes. So that I imagine is either going to be brushes or a broken wire inside somewhere, more than likely, on the field. I'll check brushes here first. More than likely it won't be these, but just in case. That one's okay. Sometimes they can just start to stick in the holder. They wear down so much they lose contact. And once they're lying for a while or they get a couple of knocks, the brush just moves down then. But it's not that, they're moving free. So now we have to strip it, get inside, check out the field. Stripping's always a problem when it comes to mixing drills. Because generally, they never come unclean. clean. The sand's okay, it's not too bad. But up here, it's just a mess. And these Bosch ones lasted a good long time. Even the bearings would rarely need to be changed. Because it's unlike a modern mix and drill. Bosch installed a felt sleeve up in here. So underneath all this here plaster, there's actually a felt seal that keeps the dust and dirt out from the bearing up in here. This isn't the correct handle either. The actual Bosch handle costs about 30 quid. This one here is probably off just a normal precision drill, a wee bit cheaper. But when they go onto these things, they generally get seized on. So that's all rusted up. The threads are probably rusted solid. So I'm not going to take that off. Otherwise, I'm going to have to replace it. So now to get onto it. We have to dig all these screws out. And we'll have to work around this handle, which will be awkward enough. But even here, that's actually a screw. Look like it. That's where they are.
Every time you get them in, this is what you have to deal with. But they're money makers. They're not there to look pretty. And these old things definitely made their money. Awkward enough for that handle in place. Now, problems on the motor, it's not in the gearbox, so I don't want to actually go onto this. So try to keep this half together. Because inside here is all grease, don't want to contaminate it with all this here. Plus, there's a gear on a spindle inside, it has two ball bearings being pushed out by a spring. Generally, when you pull this out, you're going to disengage the ball bearings, and they're going to come out. Then you're going to have to strip down the rest of the gearbox to find the spring and the balls and reassemble it all again. So no, try and leave the gearbox together if you can. Generally, inside of here, it's packed out. It's actually not that bad. I've seen worse. Sometimes that whole space can be absolutely full of cement. Actually, and kissing the entire fan, the only gap is around the fan itself. So that one ain't too bad. Leave that for now. This is more than likely the problem, I would imagine. This requires more stripping down again. Now the field itself isn't actually bolted on air deflector on these springs to actually keep the field pushed down so you don't have to get any bolts to take it out but you have to disconnect all the wiring to get it out oh look I might have jumped the gun a wee bit too soon here I did are you looking for a complicated problem and it's as simple as a screw That thread's gone on that screw. That's all that's wrong. The brush holder is actually sitting loose. And the field connector is actually loose as well. So this is actually a very, very simple problem. I didn't have to go to all this trouble at all. Oh well, happens sometimes. There's the problem there. Screw sheared off. Brush is still okay. Imagine the holder's gone. There's the cable there for the field. And that's still intact. So the field is actually not at fault. Just get that out of the way. That's the brush holder. And you can see she's been bent. Somebody has tried to tighten that up. Put that much pressure on. She's bent the wee tab. 
you know, the screw or the holder's actually gone. That thread's not tightening up. So it felt tight. Probably the person put that on, but it wasn't actually clamping anything. So that's why she's running for a little while. And once it heats up, it starts vibrating and moving. She runs for so long and then stops. That's the actual problem. Taking that one out, we'll take this one out too. There we go. Right, we'll replace the two of them. Now you give us a good clean down with the compressor as well to get rid of this dust. It's going to only go on one direction. These holes only line up one way. Actual problem. Brush holders. Now these are different from the older ones. These ones now are obsolete. Can't get them anymore. You have to go with these newer type ones now. A little bit better instead of in a square box. They've got flat edges. Only have a few flat edges. The corners are all elongated. The corners are all rounded and widened out. So any dirt or debris can act. There's only a few actual areas that brushes in contact with. All the corners and the middles are all actually expanded out and rounded over. So there's holes there where the brushes go in. So there's less chance of the brushes getting fouled up. And any dirt that gets inside can actually get out again. So we have to use them ones there now. We also need brush springs for them. The old ones are going to be a little bit corroded and full of gunk. It mightn't give a very good spring. So when in doubt, it's always best just to replace the brush spring. If you're not getting an even pressure from both brushes, you could end up causing the motor to spark and wear on one side. Just make sure this is your brass tab for your field sitting up top. And new brushes for these 11 these actually come with this little spring, this little grabbing tool, just a piece of bent wire. It's well handy for catching the brush springs and machines. Don't know why it only ever came with the 11Es. There's other machines that are far more difficult to get the brush springs out of. Now you just make sure you don't cross thread the screw as you're putting it on. Make sure they get tightened down all the way and your brush is actually secured properly.
stuff. And that should sort that. That should be her. One Bosch GRW 11E mix and drill. A broken screw on the brush holder holding on the brushes. All it needed was a new brush holder. We just replaced the two just to be sure and new springs as well. Shouldn't have actually struck the whole thing down to begin with. What I should have done was check those screws first, check the brushes, but I really should have checked the screws and the fittings, making sure those grip of wires are all connected correctly. Generally, that's not going to be the problem. But that's the easiest and quickest thing to check first before we get into the field. Generally, if it's stopping after about 15 minutes of running, you're looking at the field. But still, I should have checked that there first. But anyway, that's her. Hope you enjoyed this longer tool repair video. If you have any questions, throw a sweet comment down below. And if you're liking these here tool videos or tool repairs or tool teardowns, give us a wee like and a follow there at the bottom. There's plenty more tools to come in, plenty more to dismantle. Thanks for watching. Cheers.